the Xbox Uncut Weekly Podcast. Bungie, you, you ripped the money out of your fans' hands and burned it in front of their faces with that piece of shit known as this. I want to I wanna, I wanna be hyped. Burn! How are you and, doing? And Tim and Steve are sucking it out of me. It was a pretty good podcast. I'd say, um, three out of five. Uh, uh, South Park's a fractured but whole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait a second. We gotta, we gotta enjoy that title first. It's so good in the end. You're actually <laughs> fractured but whole. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't sound like that. Who the fuck is Master Chief? <laughs> Who's this happened? Third party money has nice. happened. I don't give a shit. Spectacular. Yeah, that was on Xbox, and the only way as a PlayStation fan you can be happy about that is is because you're happy that Xbox fans don't get to play it. I finally finished uh, Ori, which uh, took me 36 hours, 1338. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Forza doesn't, they don't program in 0 to 60 numbers. They don't program in how tight a car can turn, how much uh, traction a car has. They don't do any of that. But what they do is they put these statistics into their physics engine and they let their physics engine work it out for itself. Well, if you don't want to buy it because there's a woman in the game or on the cover, you can suck it. You know how many times I've argued with people and they're like, Persona 5! It's like it's the same shit all the time. It's like I, I don't know. They have they have reality. Like take down. You know <laughs> exactly. They hey. you know Sony's gonna have more delays. It's just it's a pattern all gen. Well, I played Minecraft Story Mode. If you don't like it, then fuck you. You can write into the show at letters at xboxuncut.com. And now your host Dustin. Welcome to Xbox Uncut's weekly podcast. We're here for another crazy ass week of Xbox video games and news, coughing, just crazy shit, crazy shit. But I failed. All right. Stands on the intro. So, hey, I, I, I'm trying to use some enthusiasm right now, but I don't know how how much I have. Maybe I'll be able to pull it off. Maybe I will not. I am hoping I do not cough through this whole show. Uh, we have a smaller panel than usual, so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna welcome in Steve Rules from SteveRules.com. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Hello. Year, Steve. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for not canceling. Uh, one of the one of the few didn't missed as uh, Sunderland called me in chat. I am Mister Reliable. Yeah. Yeah. And then suck, suck on that burn. Suck on it. <laughs> Suck it long and suck it hard, Trebek. Eric? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming on the show, Eric. Ah. Fan favorite. Oh, fan favorite, wow. You are. I don't think anybody likes anybody else more than they like you. Wow. I mean, don't get me wrong, Mr. MVP Steve Rules is, uh, he's enjoying his little head trip, but... That's um, interesting. I really think uh, if it came down to it, people would choose you over Steve. It's Eric. He never. You never talk. I mean, people find your opinion, you know, fascinating. When you get to it. <laughs> you never talk. <laughs> so does, it, does everybody have show notes up? I do. This is going to be fun. Letters! Let's get right into letters. I'm going to apologize now. Happy New Year's to you all. So I've been wondering, what made you guys choose the Xbox One over the PS4 or going full PC, the full PC route? If you guys use all the above, then what is it about the platform that you generally prefer? Also, in what areas has the Xbox excelled in in the past two years? And in what areas does it need improvement? E.g. games, uh, hardware, cross-play, network, UI, and etc. Thanks, fellers. Will. P.S. Tell Jason that his secret involves urine, a spoon, and a Ziploc bag. Um, I'll let Jason know. I'll let him know. Urine, a spoon, and a zip. I still don't have any fucking clue what that secret that sound, is. That sounds pretty creepy. Yeah, yeah. I could see it. <laughs> like, really creepy. Just spooning right. in urine into a Ziploc? I always thought Jason was a bit dodgy. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But, why do you prefer Xbox? 
Steve? Well, uh, I look back at that time, and you know, and, and the you know, I did really, you know, I, I was I was torn between Xbox One and PS4 because I wasn't overly keen on Connect and DRM uh, and other stuff, but they did have the games that I wanted. I did want to play Rise. I did want to play Dead Rising. You know, Forza, Zoo Tycoon, you know, Halo and potentially Gears at the time, Sunset Overdrive, Quantum Break. That was that that was what tempted me. You know, at the end of the day, the most important thing, the, the, the first thing in, in games is the games. They had the games and they, they made some other changes which made that much easier. And that was... You know, once once that happened, I was I was all in. Cancelled my PS4 pre-order the day that they announced the reversal of the DRM. Eric, uh, oh, that's the Xbox uh, platform. You're a big PC gamer, by the way. You're a big PC gamer. Well, there's that's how I put it. There, there's a lot of things that I would say that I prefer on the Xbox, like um. The service, for one, like certain features on the Xbox One that are not on the PS4, you know, that or just features that uh, work better, you know, on the Xbox One. Like I remember before, me and Dustin were talking about like the chat, like for instance, you know, yeah, the you chat don't wanna, on. Uh, you don't want to stab yourself because after half an hour of trying to use party chat, <laughs> like on Xbox Live, it's much more clear and crisp on for on it completely, you know. It sounds like a, this. Yeah, it's a very smooth, um, very good, good quality um, uh, audio. You know, then if you compare it to like the PSN, it doesn't have. You know, it's not even. It, it doesn't sound the same. It's not know. in the same league. It's not even the same league. Yeah. Um, the Snap feature is nice. Connect is nice, even though a lot of people don't like Connect. Let, let's just say it's good for navigation, but it, it's it's good to use. You know, it's good to use to to get to what you want. Just see a game, like you know, like. Xbox, go to Halo 5 and it's already going. You just came through the door. You know what I mean? Like, you just came through the door. You just say it. Okay, let me take my coat off and, you know, let me play the game. Um, but also, like Steve said, you know, the games, you know. And still, uh, if we're going from the beginning of the launch, yeah, it was Rise, Forza and Dead Rising. Those games definitely got me wanting to play on the Xbox, you know. Then continuing with Titanfall, then continuing with Sunset Overdrive, you know, those type of games. Of course, the Halo Master Chief Collection, um, and Horizon 2, which was, you know, still, still a pretty awesome game, you know, a lot of people still say, you know, it was one of the best races in 2014, you know, so, so I guess it's a mixture of the Xbox Live service and Microsoft's, um, it, the games, you know, they keep on pulling out big AAA titles, or, you know, or just... Not just that big. Also, yeah, I haven't got to play Ori, but that game too for other people would would be a big game, you know. So I would just say Xbox Live and the games, you know, and the Xbox One controller. I would say that too. Yeah, see, that's a very good point. Yeah. So those three, um, definitely. All right. Well, I gotta say for myself, you took my answer. It was party chat. It makes all the difference to me because I like the I love community and being able to talk to people and just talk and play games like I could play Diablo on PlayStation I could play Diablo on PC I could play it anywhere I could I really could I, I was I I built myself a PC a couple of years ago it, you know it was fairly powerful then I could play whatever I wanted but Steam's party chat sucks PlayStation's party chat sucks. And to see people champion, like, these services that just, they're not on par with Xbox. It, it's sad. And at least I can give Steam the benefit of the doubt because it's free, you know? It's just like, well, it's free, and for free, it's okay. But compared to Xbox, it's not great. Like, Xbox does it way better. Uh, especially, uh... Steam is a, you're right. Steam is a good service, but it's not, like... It's not Xbox great. It's I not mean, it, it's good, though. It, for most free, people... it's good. Most people use third-party software for chat anyway, like uh, TeamSpeak or Mumble as well. So, but I mean that, but that's one of the reasons why I went Xbox as well because I just want everything in one place, and I like how they do it on Xbox. So, but no, 
But I'm going to take another <laughs> route. My favorite, well, not my favorite. Feature that really gets me now is being able to use streaming to any computer in my house, any Windows 10 computer through Smart Glass. I really like that. Like being able to hook up my controller to it and just like walking downstairs. And I think it's going to be really amazing once these uh, thumbstick PCs actually become uh, kind of big and you can just plug it right in the HDMI port and get a full Windows 10 computer. I could see that becoming very interesting and just being able to play anywhere in the house without buying separate consoles like just being able to walk in plug in the stick bring your controller you have a wireless adapter oh yeah yeah that makes sense yeah. you can just play anywhere but that's i don't know that's what i really that's like yeah. but if we're talking about stuff they need to improve upon it's not updates because they update stuff very very fast um i think they need and i hate this answer i think they need to focus on getting more indies <coughs> i think that's where their their shortcoming is and it's not even like great it's not even that they're not hitting good indies because the game preview program does a good job at it i just i think the store <laughs> well maybe this that's the wrong answer maybe it's the store page it needs to be more defined and that I mean, way they can actually push out more games and <laughs> where it makes more logical sense what were you gonna say steve hold on I mean, they don't have a, a lack of indie games. There's 11 indie games, possibly 12, due out already this month. The the the, the problem is, yeah, all right, all right, um, is their whole games are games are games thing. Like, they don't seem to realize that they can treat every game as a game, but still give them... Uh, kind of somewhere to thrive like that xbox live arcade branding you know it wasn't the the file sizes or the the rules that they set up to do with achievements and and publishing all that that made it su successful it was a brand where people could see things and i think that i don't think they should have ever got rid of it i mean they they could have kept everything that it is now but just had somewhere you know it was a brand name that people know people loved and and it was something where if you if you just had a section on the store, you know, I mean, you could leave all the games in, um, uh, like new release stuff. But no, no, I you know, agree. Having, but having the games store needs on to demand, I, I mean, it's better than it was. Um, well, but the yeah, cash it's not, is better it's not than it was. But the store's still kind of bad. Yeah, it's it's not great. But they they should have kept Xbox Live Arcade. Yeah. And they should have no, kept, and you can also keep games on demand. But, you know, because they're your brand, people know what they are. So if people turn, so if people just want, and I suppose from their point of view, they'll say, well, we just want people to see everything as games. That's perfectly fine. But, I mean, they'll have the numbers better than we do. But I just think that 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 brand was so successful last Wait, generation. You're, sorry, I, I got confused there. I, sometimes I do. But I'm saying when you was talking about the indie store, you mean like that, that section that's at indie? on Xbox Live? Like that that little tiny section where X and A people made games? No, that was Xbox Live Indie Games. That was Xbox um, Live Indie I'm Games. I'm talking about like, uh, Xbox uh, so Live about, Arcade. Yeah, Live Arcade. Oh, no, they're not going to bring that back. It's over. I think well, no, they should bring it back. Saying they they have shit. Summer of Arcade. Arcade. They have the summer thing, you know. But, but, no, you know. but that's... No, nah, that's their summer spotlight thing this year was just... Oh, we've got a bunch of games coming out, but we don't know when they're coming out. So we're just gonna let you know. And then they were like, "Oh, by the way, tonight this game is coming out, and it's part of Summer Spotlight." It wasn't. It wasn't structured. It was. It was completely against everything that made some of arcades oh, so no. good. Well, I don't know. They can bring it back, but I don't. I didn't think. I didn't think Dustin that was like a major deal that that they really need to bring it back. I, I think. I don't, well, I don't think no, like a lot of indie games now. It, it was like, like five weeks something. of like mo like movie trailers. Like you were sitting there, you were like, "Man, fucking 
Batman v Super trailer. Like, this is coming out, and this is coming out. Like, you still get that with Comic-Con, but now you don't get that with Summer of Arcade. Because just, I mean, there was always, like, it was always, you'd hit the summer, the drought would start, but then you would have, like, four or five weeks of just arcade games popping out. And they were all very refined. Microsoft put money into it. Uh, and they they were good games. They were always they none of them ever felt like wow that's an arcade game yeah like they all felt polished and you uh, just don't get that. Ah, uh, I see. So you want back to how they did? Well, you know it's funny. They're probably never going to do that again because like look at how everything is now. Like it's not about like quality for any type of indie game, and that's just the truth. It is that's the truth. And the games come out whenever you know. Like nobody wants any. Well, like, remember that little self-publishing problem Microsoft had? I, like, if you read into it, it's all about Microsoft trying to, you know, be like a moderator, you know? Be like somebody that goes in there and check how their games are, you know what I mean? Which games are doing well, and then they put the other ones to the front. They're not doing, they're trying to not do that anymore. They're trying to just do what Sony does, and Sony doesn't moderate anything. They just, any well, game, <laughs> Sony, you know, game Sony there. did last spring, they did a thing, and they and they announced way beforehand the games that would come out each week, and it was it was like a summer of arcade. It was exactly the same. And I, I don't think that... that but when you look at the other games, though, the other they just come out. It's, it's like they, on their blog, just say everything when it comes out, and that's it. They don't really... You know, it's not like a major deal for them. They're just like, here's the other game, here's the other game, here's the... You know what I mean, it's not like how Dustin's saying it. It's not. It, it's just... Here's the game. There you go. You know what I mean? Like, that's how they treat it. They treat it like every single indie game is like... <laughs> it's like, I mean, there was like a Dolphin game in, in the classroom or whatever. <laughs> you're, you're a student. And that game apparently was like, they just put on their blog, you know? It's like, it's not how you're saying anymore. No, you're but that's... That. You can still do that and then hold off certain titles and say, hey, we want to make this a big title for this week of, you know, August... I think the first... The month of August, we want to introduce four games. Maybe they'll do that with Inside Below. Doesn't that come out? And Cuphead. When they, they, they're supposed to be coming out. So maybe in yeah. the summer they'll come out. And, and no developer's going to reject the chance to be part of that. We're going to have a main huge page that has your game right on the front of it. For Lots a full of week. promotion and stuff. And that, and that is ultimately how you get games first on your platform is by saying, oh, we'll do this big promotion. I mean, look at some of the games they had on Xbox Live Arcade back in the day. You know, that that was how they that was how they got them. We'll make you part of Summer of Arcade because when we do Summer of Arcade, these games go massive. You won't be part of that? Free money. Yeah. It'll boost your sales. And it's mm. not... It, uh, it saves them money because they're not... Like, going, okay, it's going to be Games of Gold this month. Like, they don't have to do that. They could just say, this is our big sale. Promote the fuck out of it. Only we'll spend see. Why don't you, uh, we'll see. We'll see uh, if they do that. We'll find out. But, okay. Well, thank you so much, Will, for writing in. Let's see. Hi, Xbox Uncut crew. My question for this week is, with the recent announcement of Scalebound being delayed until 2017... Do you think any other exclusive will get delayed? I am okay with Scalebound being pushed back because that means the final game will be the best that it can be. Keep up the great work, guys, and let's make this the number one Xbox Xbox podcast of 2106. <laughs> Darth Vader 360. <laughs> well, we got we got a we got some time. That. We got some time, but <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. 2106. It's gonna be our bitch. Not it's sure I'm going to be around in 80 years' time. Ah, 80, I think we can 90. do it. I think we can do it. Listen, with enough, look at modern science. Oh, we can live to 220, 350. <laughs> I'm not sure I rate my chances of lasting that long. But Darth Vidar, I think... Uh, I don't want to jump right into news, but we know... Uh, what's his... What is it? Recall. 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 That got delayed, so... But... Although they've been very unspecific about that, they just said it's now in the it's latter half. It's been pushed back, yeah. And well, delayed fair, and whatever. They, and the, well, they said originally it was spring 2016, and spring ends in mid June. So technically, I, I think that they'll probably be looking at an earlier launch in that period because I, I can't see them shifting scale bound out of the holiday just to stick Recore in there instead. I, yeah. I do. I think that's possible. I think that's exactly what they were doing. Because no one, I'm telling you, nobody delays 
a game, and that's coming out in the holiday in January. You I, like you can look in history. Yeah, Nobody but, but, does that. But if you they, count, don't, they wait to June no. or like before games come, and they'll say, "Look, it's not coming to holiday." Like Uncharted Four, it's not coming. You know, like they don't do it in June. Four days, like in the January. Sorry, in January. You know, that's crazy. Like you don't. don't yeah, but see that. the reason why you delay it now is because either you've got concerns about that holiday period, or because right now you can affect the final product much more than if you make the decision six months' time. In six months' time, you're going to be polishing, whereas now they're probably focusing on, okay, well, we need to be shipping in nine, ten months' time. What yeah, we're going that's to what I'm saying. Oh, if man. they waited so. six months and waited towards the, towards the holidays, they could at least... They didn't do that. They shifted... Recore will be announced. I have no, no no doubt in my mind that it's coming out in the holidays. No doubt. Quick question: Does Microsoft own Scalebound? I don't remember. Yes. Yes. So yeah. I really think that it's a mixture of kind of both. But I think there's probably a gameplay element where Microsoft was like, "We need to have this in the game. Y'all, we're gonna cut it. Let's just push it. It's not too big of a deal." <laughs> they get well, plenty of games coming. It's like we got Gears in the holiday. We're not gonna tell you about that Horizon Three, but it's coming. <laughs> Also, with, I mean, look at Sunset Overdrive launching the holidays and not doing that big. I think it would be a very stupid decision to stick another one of your new IPs in the holiday because it's just not what people do in the holidays anymore. Really? Like, not for sort of new IPs like that. Everyone's shipping mostly outside of the holidays. Well, somebody's got to do, I mean, you got to have some type of new IP in the holidays. I mean, you can't keep, like, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying overall, like, you can't keep just dodging it and just wait till... Well, I think the holidays are for the established franchises, and I think a lot of people get that now. I mean, okay, Destiny was massive, but, you know, when you combine Bungie and Activision, you know, there'd be an expectation from that, whereas something from Armature or Platinum... I mean, Platinum games don't sell particularly well all year round. I would think putting them in the holidays well, would just be an easy way to put your money down you know the drain. You're right. If the game is like, like Destiny, you're right. Destiny, when Destiny came out, apparently it sold like, what was it, like 5 million? Later on, they found out. You're right. That game was it's Bungie's game on the PlayStation, a new game on Xbox One. It's just new shooter. You know, you're right. It was a much bigger expectation. But what if Platinum Games just showed like something all like like some people are still talking about Scalebound like man Scalebound is really good but what if in June they showed something that was just so crazy you know the combat with the co-op with four people you know four players with your dragons and it was just so crazy people were like damn I I remember that and then people just want to get that game that's how it was with uh with um the Gears of War you know when Gears of War one came and during the 360 time people saw something it was so amazing. They had to get it, and it was a hit, you know. And it came out in the holiday season, you know. It, it could happen, you know. After what, it could happen. Well, it's not happening now, but you know what I mean. They should. I don't think everybody should be scared to not release a game in the holiday, because you just you'll just get delays, you know. Well, I think you know. Look at the way that Quantum Break was shifted out, and they said that was for positioning, and they've got themselves a really good release date in April. So far, the only thing coming out that day is like Dirt Rally or. Something. Oh yeah, yeah. For quantum break. Yeah, you're right for quantum you know, break. But I think they really shifted out because I don't know where that game would have fit in. Like if you look at the months, like September, October, November, you know, you can't put it in the same month. You know, Forge is coming out. You can't put it in the same month. Halo's coming out, and you can't put it out in November. So they just then, have, you know, they have to you, let it go. You know. But then, can you put Recore in the same month as Forza Horizon, Halo Wars Two, or Gears Four? Ah, oh, dang it! You got me there. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I think I think Recall will be at latest early September, depending on what else is in early September, which they'll know. I think it'll probably be July or August. July or August. So, wait, wait, isn't Crackdown coming out in the summer? It has to be like in August. Uh, that's July. only the multiplayer. They've been very cautious about what they're saying. Crackdown is. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was like game preview or like a beta or something. Well, they said multiplayer. They didn't say beta. They literally said multiplayer. Yeah, but whether they choose to redefine what they do, they're, they're being coy for a reason. So. Well, thank you so much for writing in Darth Vidar. How are you doing, Vern? So now, so we know Scalebound is a 2017 title. 
what else is there? Would you gentlemen kindly go on a limb and make some predictions? Crazy predictions are okay, as well as reasonable ones. Oh, no bones. Uh, crazy ones, uh, Crimson Skies, uh, Perfect no Dark. Um, I said crazy predictions, Steve. Crazy. <laughs> Don't dash my crazy predictions. I'm going to say per Crimson Skies. Probably something like 80 years old when we do the 2106 show. It's going to be great. Just wait for Crimson Skies. 2107 title. <laughs> <laughs> One day it will be, come. That might be about the time where they finally decide to go back to the franchise. That actually probably sounds like it could be right. Yeah. So... Uh, any other crazy predictions, guys? Splinter Cell, maybe? Is that? I think that's reasonable I, at this point. It'll be at <laughs> E3, but I, th I think they'll they'll tease it at E3. Do like you they think did Microsoft Ghost gets license rights? Nah, don't, I don't think Phil will be unless unless it was mega cheap. I don't think Phil will be interested in it. Wants to build their own stuff that they own. I, th I think you look at why they got Tomb Raider. I mean, Aaron Greenberg did an interview this week where he said. We expected Uncharted to ship this holiday, whereas Microsoft would look at Splinter Cell, and as, you know, unless it's very cheap, they'll probably look at it and say, "Well, you know, what 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 do Sony have that would make us want to spend money on Splinter Cell?" And I think they would probably say, "Well, actually, we'd probably rather just thirty-six million consoles is what they would say," and then they'd go, "Fuck, let's uh, Splinter Cell, let's do it." I mean, you know, they were sort of making a a stealthy S ish sort of thing in whatever the Black Tusk were doing before they came to the coalition, but you know, they sort of count that and I don't know, I think they if they were gonna go stealthy they'd probably perhaps try and make something of their own. If that was of, of interest to them. Perfect Dark Revival or something. Alright. <laughs> Any guesses, Eric? Oh man, hmm. that that's hard. Like, cause I don't know what else they can. Like, we already know every game they got, right? We know every game that's that's coming. They gave us. They said they gave us a snapshot of what's coming. Um, what type of surprise could come at E3? I don't know. Well, so, um, I think the like the next state of decay will be there, but. I, I don't think know that, let me see that's if I not remember really Fan surprise. Dust, maybe we'll hear more about that. I mean, it's it's not being talked about, but maybe we'll. That's because they haven't got a developer. <laughs> got, maybe they'll have a. They'll come out. I, <laughs> I think they have a developer by now. Um, okay. like a big major surprise would be, because I'm trying to look at like if you look at the teams, right? We know what everybody's making. We know Rare is not like they're making Sea of Thieves. They're focused on that. They're not making a Conquer. Coalition's making Gears. Lionhead's making Fable. Or if, or if Lionhead came and they announced Fable 4, that would be a big surprise, wouldn't that? Because we know they're working on another another project, you know, so. Then I, I would say that if Fable 4 was, was you know, revealed, that would be a big um, announcement. So that's a bit, another big RPG. Um, what would be... It's hard. It's hard to even predict because they have all these. We, they already told us what's coming, you know. And I can't see any other team that they have, you know, that would make something. It would have to come from outside of Microsoft, you know, like someone else making a game for them. Well, that's that's where their new stuff is going to come from because, you know, as you said, you know, everyone else, everyone is either just shipped or is just about to ship. Yeah. So, but that's you know that would be what they'll have. They'll have new partnerships. They'll have surprises. I mean, look at the the sort of the, the sort of big new IPs they've got coming apart from Sea of Thieves, you know, uh, Scalebound, Quantum Break, Recall, all outside developed. Yeah. They'll have they'll have new stuff. It's just wait, difficult wait. to predict. Wait, see, Sea of Thieves was um, Sea of Thieves. Yeah, Sea of Thieves. Do you think maybe? I hope we have like a major blowout at E3 of that. You know, when they show it, because we don't even, they don't even have a release date on it either, right? We don't know when that's coming out. But it's hard to say. It's hard to say what would else would be what they're going to do because it's just, everybody's working on some, something besides like the Hololens developers or something. You know, we know what everybody's making. <coughs> I 
All right. Thank you so much. Let's move on to Old No Bones. Second letter. What announced games do you look? What announced games do you look forward to seeing in real time for the first time the most? For me, it's going to be Halo Wars 2. I enjoyed the first, and I'm really interested to see another big budget RTS on console and PC. Uh, old no bones. Uh, I don't know. Well, like what? What haven't? I mean, I guess Recore. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet. But everything else, <laughs> we've seen real time footage of. That, I was supposed to see a thieves. I mean, we kind of saw so, but we didn't. You know, we didn't see like a a mission or a level or something. It was just you know, it was yeah, obviously it was just a, a teaser. Whatever. So the most, I was gonna say Gears of War four, but we already did see that. We saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah, we saw Scalebound. Uh. Yeah, I think the only thing that we know about that we haven't seen is Recore. Phantom Dust, technically. Oh yeah, Phantom Dust. Yeah. I th well, I mean, if that, if they find a new developer, they'll no, I agree, but I'm just trying everything. to think of games we know that, you know, like at E3, I think E3 is going to be similar. You know how, at E3, um, was it uh, 2015 where they 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 just came out there and then we were going to see like a whole bunch of like content. Of every, we're gonna see scale bound. We're gonna see Rico. It's gonna be crazy. Like if you think about it, it's gonna be you're gonna see every game that that we knew was coming in 2016. Besides scale bound, you know it's not coming, but everything else is right. We're gonna see a massive blowout of those games. We're gonna see more of Crackdown. We did see some of Crackdown, but we didn't see how all the game modes is. We didn't get to see keys of the city. So I got I got think Crackdown actually would be the most I would look. I would have to really see. I know we saw some of it, but we didn't see. Like, you know what I mean? Like, actual, you know, when you see Gears of War or Sea of Thieves, you know, where you're seeing the people moving around like that. We haven't seen, like, actual um, multiplayer, online multiplayer, um, uh, people you're versing or just people playing with you inside a city and destroying stuff. You haven't seen that yet. So I think Crackdown would be my, you know, I want to see the most, you know, in real time, you know. Um, we mentioned State of Decay earlier, like the next one. I mean, we know that they're working on one, and it's <clears throat> this E3 is going to be three years since the original launch, which is quite a long time. Yes, yeah, Steve, you're right, because they made a deal, right? I remember. They yeah, multi-year, multi-game yeah, deal. So, they, so that's interesting, and it was supposed to, I mean, because they, what was interesting was, like, didn't they make a deal, if I remember correctly, with State of Decay, that... In order for them to put, they were going to fund State of Decay. They worked on a title. It was called Class Four or something like that. It was supposed to be like an MMO. Yeah, or it's class and that four. was that was before I think that other multi-year thing. If I'm correct. So yes. That, so it's so it's multiple things. So yeah, like you said, multi-year, multi-game. So we have to figure out. Well, maybe we'll see more of that. We'll have to wait and see. I wonder. I mean, I I don't think that they will just make a straight up. MMO. I think it'll just be like a sort of a large scale co-op. So I think it it could be like a bit like Crackdown, where it's got like this big, huge cloud-based thing with like sort of persistent sort of sort of an online world where people can have different settlements and survive together. And and then there's also like a single player oh, mode where people can sort of play with oh, their yeah. friends. So, you know that you're right. You're going to see more. That would be good. To, that's one thing we we would have to, that too. That would be amazing if they could make. A much more that would give them another uh, push for like um that cloud power you know like crackdown and stuff you know another good way to use it you know mm. but for me i definitely would be crackdown um for dustin you, you you're okay you're going to go with state of decay i don't think I mean, you can say crackdowns because we've seen it but i mean ah uh, dang it I said cracked only because like we haven't seen like you know like a multiplayer mode you know but you know, so but I get what you're saying like I'm saying like I haven't seen keys of the city or whatever you know? yeah that's true but I'm telling you I'm, I I remember on Twitter when we talked to one of the developers and he even <laughs> he even tweeted so we're gonna we might get to see a drill in the game guys okay. 
because okay, because we we talked to one of the developers. Okay, I think it was Dustin. I forgot. I got it saved somewhere. So we might see a drill as a weapon or a tool or a vehicle. Crackdown too. I just want everybody to know that. Which would be awesome if they could, you know, put use that as like a destruction tool through a wall or something. All right. Thank you so much for writing in. Oh, no bones. I got my second one because I got something to drink. <laughs> oh. Thanks, everybody, for writing in. You can also write in at letters at xboxuncut.com. I promise Vern will be back next week to make... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Maybe I don't have a second one. To make uh, reading the letters a little bit more enjoyable because I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to survive. Uh, an update from the Scalebound team. Scalebound's been delayed, guys. I think we've already kind of hit this on <laughs> this in letters. But in 2017, yes. sadly, no more Scalebound. <laughs> Not for 2016, anyway. But, moving on to other news. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, yes. Xbox One's exclusive record written by Destiny Halo Universe co-creator Joseph Staten, the co-creator of Halo and Destiny Universes, who has since left Bungie to work at Microsoft, is the senior creative director, is the lead writer for the upcoming Xbox oh, excuse me, Xbox One exclusive record. That piece is the information was mentioned in the New York Times story. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Like, I'm, I'm a really big fan of the Halo story. Yeah, it was a surprise to see that he was writing for it. Yeah. But I don't think anybody still gives two fucks about the Destiny story, so it's kind of like a hit and miss. So they're well, one say, one. everything he did got everything he did got scrapped when he left anyway. So, which is probably the reason why it's such a cost of fuck. Yep. <laughs> so it's, it's not like he wrote Destiny story. That's kind of a misnomer. He wrote the story that got scrapped. Not the story. <laughs> yeah, he wrote the story that get. Yeah, so so that means that um, in Recore, they it's a big deal. They <laughs> they have the co-creator, you know, with Halo. It, that's kind of <coughs> so that that is a big deal. But it makes me wonder what type of story Recore is like. Is it like uh, type of game? I mean, Recore is. We know it's a third-person action game, but I want to see uh, it revealed. You know, so we can talk more about it. Yep. <sighs> Interesting to see him sort of start again. I mean, since he came back to Microsoft, he did say that he did a bit of work on Sunset Overdrive, and I think he was, you know, sort of working on stuff like Crackdown and Scalebound. But he's the sort of lead story guy on Recore, as opposed to sort of assisting. So it'll be interesting to see what he can come up with. That's you know, and it's new, and you know, you, obviously when you come up with something new, you get to sort of define it and shape it from the very beginning. So that'll be interesting. All right, I'm getting yelled at by the chat room. <laughs> Nobody's liking my performance. Oh, God. Okay. Look, man. <clears throat> Gotta wing it, okay? Come on, get it. All right, let's see. Wicked's saying he had two emails. But when I oh. looked, I believe we went over your emails on the show before. But I will check. Because I'm not trying to... We did the gamer tag one with the points. I know that. Alright, I'm going to read this email. Hopefully this is it. Since I just had a match in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege on Xbox One at 2 a.m. on Christmas Day, and there was, was someone with a team with a gamer tag that had a word that it was the same as mine. She chose Wicked. Law. So, have you ever seen a gamer tag similar to your own? From the Wicked Soul, from the Wicked, you know, TW Soul. P.S. She wasn't even good, but she was only level six, so it might have been a Xmas Xmas gift. Who knows? P.P.P.P.S. I know it's a lady because she uses a female identifier in the gamer tag. 
Um, Bazooka XP, I, I haven't seen many, like, G.I. Joe references in gamer tags, but I guess there's probably a million out, out there, but <coughs> I have not seen it. I Someone added me called Joe Rules. And then he was like, oh, cool gamer tag, man. And I was like, yeah, you too. And then he seemed to be weird about it. But, I mean, he obviously copied me because I was the OG rules. So, he's a dickhead. <coughs> Steve rules. Steve rules. Wow, that's being mean. Wow. Uh, you have to understand, Eric. You know, when someone's, you know, someone's stealing your thing, your idea, you got to slap them down. That's what I did. I slapped Jeez. him down. Wow. <laughs> All right, next Evil letter. Evil Steve. <laughs> 2015. What a great year for music. A deal came back in full force and probably some other stuff. I really don't follow pop news. This is all about the album of the year. I'll start with my runners-up. <laughs> Wicked, what the fuck does this have to do with Okay. Uh... <laughs> Where, where was that? I follow pop news. <laughs> I'll try to keep it short. Every open eye. Dustin, are you okay? <laughs> Every open eye from. Oh, well, now I'm going to have to have you read this, Steve. <laughs> I'm going to cough through the whole thing. Uh, is it in the left? Is it in the. No. But I can get it to you. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. There you go. Oh. Uh, how do I? Oh, shit. Okay, 2015. What a great year for music. Adele came back in full force, and probably some other stuff. I really don't follow pop news. This is all about the album of the year. Uh, you imagine if we did album of the year awards that take like a week. I'll start with my runner-ups. I'll try to keep it short. Every open eye from churches. Really great, nice sound. The singer has a great voice. Next up is Methods of Murder from Eye of the Destroyer. Tim should know them. It's death metal, of course. It's on here. Uh, vocals could use some work, but that's another subject for another letter. On to the winner. It's a little album called For Fortitude from Feed Her to the Sharks. I love this one. Melodic metalcore at its finest. Every song is pure sex. So what is your album of the year if you don't have have one pick a song instead. Is that for, oh, uh, from your favorite death metal fan? First name the middle name Wicked, last name Soul. Wink. What what does that have to do with gaming? <coughs> Wait, is this just my favorite album of? Yeah, that's just wow. <sighs> okay. Uh... I don't know. I haven't put much thought into this. I'm trying to think of... <laughs> He's blindsided us. We should all come back next week. Vern, Vern will have a lot of music if we let him do it next week. He could probably make his own show about it. The Vernoning. Or Vern. something equally terrible. That's... We can tell that back. <sighs> yeah, I can't even think of any of the albums that I... I mean, the only thing I can think of is... Uh... Is that, um, I kind of listen to a lot of old music. I don't keep up with a lot of new music. Because most of it's garbage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I, I would have to pick up some really bad <coughs> uh, bullshit music, but uh, I'm trying to think of what the, the album was called. Because there is an actual album that I really enjoyed. Uh, Stone Sour did a cover album. Which I really liked, where they uh, redid uh, <laughs> a Metallica song, you know, ACDC, a uh, few different bands. It was really good, though. I can't remember the name of the fucking album, though. I hate to say it. it's something weird. <coughs> Eric, any any album? No. No. Steve, you don't. Well, I got one. What? What's that? Uh, one of them, uh, according to some people, say it's pretty good. It's the uh, Trials uh, Suite. 
or, or, or excuse me, it's a Halo 5 soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> I heard it's uh, pretty well known and received. Uh, one of the best uh, tracks, I think it's called The Trials of Osiris. Oh no, it's called Meanwhile in Burbank is the one I'm talking about. I apologize. But, yeah, I love Creeping Death. It's a great song from Metallica that they cover. But, uh... I posted another letter for you to read. Okay. Okay. Hey, Xbox Uncut Crew. Number one, with Crackdown only being available as a multiplayer beta for 2016 and Scalebound and Recall experiencing delays, is the Xbox One lineup for the year already beginning to falter, or do you think there's a few more unannounced exclusives that may make up for it at E3 and Gamescom? Number two, in 2015, the Inner Circle podcast spoke to Aaron Greenberg, and he mentioned that Rare has been working on multiple projects is it likely to be a battletoads game the twisted pixel rumor seems to be debunked by aaron himself and with phil having a battletoads twitter character and t-shirt along with the character character starring in killer instinct and shovel knight have to be a sign of something thanks will so do you think their lineup is beginning to falter because they've delayed a couple of games no definitely not no sorry I know, like I said, in January, you usually do not see anyone delay a game like that. As I said, it was just like one of the, it's just weird, you know. But that doesn't mean um, that that makes, means the lineup is not a good lineup, you know. You know, you still have Quantum Break to look forward to in April, you know. You have Cuphead to look forward to inside. I'd, you got Gears of War 4, Halo Wars 2. You know, there's games in the mix for people to play. Right? ReCore is definitely still coming out. Sea of Thieves. Yes, there's no scale bound, which, which looks awesome. But, and I know Crackdown, apparently, he's saying it's a multiplayer bait. We'll see what it is, because it sounds like, though, it's act, the actual multiplayer. I mean, you have to wait to find out. You know what I mean? Like maybe I don't know if they're gonna do a beta. Then they're gonna I, I don't know. But it sounds like like they would have wrote it. You know, on the the snapshot. I don't know if anybody saw like when they showed all the titles, they put the Fable Legends beta and they put Crackdown multiplayer, as in just the mo- they didn't put beta or nothing. They just put multiplayer. You know. So no, I don't feel like the lineup is any less. Especially, I'm pretty sure. Like on the first half, I guess you could say. Quantum Break is the big title to get in April, like for AAA, and then towards the rest of the year, the other, you know, like towards the half, the next half, you know, like towards J- June, right, or when you know Crackdown comes, then you have Crackdown for the, so you got something in the spring, you got something in the summer. Which here's the funny thing, we didn't have a AAA in the summer. I don't know if everybody remember that. And then in the fall, once again, you have. Gears of War 4, Halo Wars, and I see a Thieves could be coming out in the holiday or it could be coming out in the summer. Too. Who knows how it's going to come out, you know? So you still have a, a pretty solid lineup. You know, no, no way around it for AAA titles or just games in general, you know? But what do you guys think? Dustin? <laughs> I don't have any feelings either way on this topic. Uh, <laughs> as of right now, I'm trying not to cough. Uh, I don't think it's fortunate. I mean, it's. I want them to make the best decisions for their games. You know, for a, a new franchise like Scalebound, I didn't think that the holidays would be a particularly good time to release it. So I think it's given it a better chance of success to move it to 2017. You know, they've said that they've got some other things, and I think, you know, Forza Horizon, they probably have some smaller things. Um, you know, I think it's it's important to position your games correctly and give them the time they need. So I'm I'm quite happy. I mean, they've got 11 games coming to Xbox One so far this year after Scalebound was delayed. So I'm I'm not I'm not concerned about running out of stuff to play that you know Microsoft after publishing. Uh, and the second one is. With Rem working on multiple projects, do you think it's likely to be Battletoads due to all the hints that we've seen? I think Battletoads is being produced, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's being produced by them. 
Yeah, I agree with Dustin. I think that they'll have like another studio. They'll they'll take their game like they did Phantom Dust, right? And oh no, I'm thinking more like Killer Instinct. Oh, like Killer Instinct. Oh, it's going to be working like together, like a side a side uh, group, and then I think you'll see Battletoads and Seasons. I think they're going to get really? the same formula. In seasons. Wow. How do you do that, that for Battle Tides? That'll be interesting. Uh, you just cut up the story into episode chunks, and that way you can sell it at ten dollars a pop. That yeah. actually, like, like, um, that that uh, I think um, that model could work well. Actually. Besides, like, we're we're talking about Summer of Arcade, and we're missing all the uh, Microsoft titles that they couldn't, like, they they don't actually touch, and they actually own quite a few. I mean, you could sit there and truly make an awesome episodic story for Battletoads where it's just a side scroller and for like five dollars an episode, ten dollars an episode, they give you a full feature length thing, but it's not gonna cost them an arm and a leg to put a sixty dollar Battletoads out. You're right. You would have to change mm -hmm. the model and you're right. Dustin's right. I just think they can change and even I don't think you could do I don't think it works for everything, but Think about if they did, like, let's say they took Crimson Skies and they made yeah. it into, like, a Telltale setup where you still get the multiplayer and that's always together, like Killer Instinct is, but the story itself is done in seasons. And that way, if you need to, hey, this ain't selling well, we can only afford to do one more episode, then you can just fucking wrap it up before, you know, real quick and then just call it one and done. But if it takes off, you can just keep building at it and building at it and keep making money off of it. And I think that formula is going to, I hate to say, kind of be the future of games. Bat for Battletoads, no. yeah. For non-big budget games, I should say. I'm, I'm not sure I really see them doing that for, for Battletoads, personally. Well, they're not going to make, like, I mean... They're not going to make the game like a triple A. No, they're not going to make it like well, a no, but game. it will be like a fifteen, twenty dollar max game, and yeah. But then, if you make Battletoads one, right? Then you, I mean, you can make multiple. You can be make multiple, you know, versions of it. You know. Yeah, it but they'll just they'll just take a two and a three and on the end of that. And then they can take the Battletoads characters and whoever they meet up with, right, in the game, and they could pass them off to Killer Instinct as characters or something. That could work. That could be cool, actually. It could work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the head of the studio, Craig Duncan, was on Major Nelson's podcast fairly recently, and he did say that after Rare Replay, everyone was now on Sea of Thieves as well. And multiple projects at that time, I think, meant Rare Replay. I mean, they'll have incubation, but they'll be looking at, you know, okay, well, you know, what are we doing after uh, Sea of Thieves? Because that, you know, when you've got sort of such a smaller team trying to make a, a AAA game. You know, they'll be looking at two or three prototypes, and that'll probably take that team the length of time that it would take to make Sea of Thieves. And then after that, you know, they can decide sort of which ones to pick up and move on with it. So, yeah, I, th I think it put, if, the, if it is coming, it'll be somewhere else. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you, Will, for writing in. Uh, let's get down, down to the nitty gritty. Record delay to the second half of 2016. According to videogamer.com. Uh, Steve, do you want to host? I feel like I'm going to kill it for the rest of the show. I can give it a try if you like. Yeah, we're up to the Japanese game market. Falls to the lowest point in 26 years. Declines 13% year on year. Yeah, so things are looking... Uh, pretty bleak in Japan. Uh, actually, that's literally what it says. I hadn't even read that off the. Uh, I hadn't even read that off the show notes. <laughs> uh, according to Famitsu, which is the, the Japanese publication, uh, in 2015 the sector's games market generated 321 billion yen, a 13% decline year on year. Meanwhile, software sales dropped 16% to 191 billion yen, and console sales dipped to 130 billion yen, an 8.5% drop off. Yes, that's completely ridiculous. That be what I knew that would happen, you know, because no matter how many, like people were like saying a lot of crazy stuff. They're like, man, you know, like the PS4, you know, had a lot of momentum. Um, the Wii U was just dominating software. And it's still not as great as it. You know, what I mean, it's so it's still not selling games as, as much as it. As, you know, what I mean, like it's not. 
there's not a lot of Final Fantasy type of sales numbers. You know, it's not like they're Japanese RPGs that are coming out or just blowing the charts up, you know, every time. Like, you know, when you look at uh, Famitsu, right, and they show the track, the, the different type of, they're tracking all the software sales, and people are like, oh, this is amazing that the PS4 sold uh, 12,000 units <laughs> in, a, in a week or so, or so. You know what I mean? Like, and then meanwhile, in, like, in America, you know, it's selling, like, 300 or 400,000 a month, you know? So that that right out there, right there, you see a difference. You know, the Wii U is the same way too. It's like top. It's the best selling out. console in Japan, right? It now. is. It is. It is the best yeah. selling. It's at three point five million units. Yep. And it's still yeah. that was still a low point, which is crazy, right? It's still uh, a low point. I think PS4 is beating it for launches aligned, but obviously they weren't aligned. So, and I mean, Sony have got a lot of games coming. Out. I'd be surprised if they. If they didn't see an improvement, I think you know what will happen. You know, the market's not going to increase. That and the Wii U's kind of on its way out. It's not like yeah. exactly. Yeah, I think, I think what we'll see is the the PS4 will. I think it'll start to do much better. But what you'll see, I mean, Xbox is doing like six hundred a week, and we use. I mean, it's actually doing okay over there. Um, but it, you know, that's that's all just going to I think fall into the PS4, and that'll be. Yeah, but if you look, you know what I mean, though, right? See, like, if you look at Japan and you compare Japan to the other markets, it's not even, you know what I mean? Like, the timing, how how long it's taking Japan to get to a certain amount of install base for either system, system you know? The Wii U's mm. been out since 2012, you know? Like, that's that's a long time, and now they're just at, what, 3.5? or you know what I mean, that's, that's nothing. You know, I'm just saying, it's not impressive. Imagine if the PS4 in America or in Europe, right, was only at 2.5, or was it 2.3 right now, two years later. It would be crazy. Probably about, yeah, probably yeah, about that, what Xbox One is doing, to be fair, in Europe. It, I, I, but I'm just saying, like, it's just wouldn't... <laughs> It wouldn't be a big. It would not work out well. I just said Japan. I don't know. They need, like, they need a massive boost. They need like hopefully Final Fantasy comes out and changes things. But it's those not. games out now are not going to do anything. Like, you know, Sony could have have a, a lot of games. Nintendo could have a lot of Mario and Zelda. But that's not going to cut it. You know. Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's just. You know they they just like mobile over there. I mean the the 3ds I think is still doing pretty well. So 3ds is the best selling console of all time, or was that the DS? Probably the DS. Yeah, that was the DS. The DS. The very no, first. but 3ds is outpacing it still, right? It's doing insane. Uh, I don't correct. think so. Do you just mean in Japan? Well, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, and it's, it's killing the other DS. Wow. I'm not sure. It might be. But you think? Uh, well, I guess all everybody's using going for the mobile games and stuff, so that's why this the console market's um not hit, doing well, I guess. Mm, no. <laughs> okay. Next piece of news: Crackdown Three is out this summer, but just the multiplayer mode. Uh, let's pretend for a moment that I'm the most important person in your life. Well, remember when I said that Crackdown 3 is basically two games? I was more right than I, you, or my adoring lucky parents could have known. Because it looks as though Crackdown 3 will ship, at least initially, with only the multiplayer portion intact. Tucked to the bottom of an Xbox Wire blog post is an updated list of 2016 release dates, and tucked right in the middle of this list is a mention of Crackdown 3, and tucked in the middle mentions multiplayer in summer 2016. Any thoughts? <coughs> I'm, looking, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I haven't played KI in a while. I enjoy Killer Instinct a lot. Um, I think Khan Ra was one of my favorite characters. I don't know why people don't like him. He's pretty cool. In season two, you know, TJ Combo, of course, was, you know, it's not because he's black, but, you know, he was a good character, you know. Um, but for, for um, Killer Instinct season three, I'm not surprised. It's, it's just the multiplayer. I mean, you're not gonna, I, I was because it's going to be similar, right? The way they did it. Uh, did I say Killer Instinct? Because it's for Crackdown. Oh, what you meant? Oh, you meant the wrong thing. Oh, okay. So it's. Did, yeah. I, did I say Killer Instinct? You skipped that... over Ki or oh. you inserted oh. it somewhere. Oh. Yeah, Ki is later on. Oh, I'll mention that in a minute. I'll talk okay. about Crackdown. So you. <laughs> 
for Killer Instinct. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be good. I mean, it's Killer, it's Killer Instinct. We're gonna have Tusk as a character. We're gonna we can't wait to see how he looks now on Xbox One. You know, they they've done very well with the character design. Wait, are we talking about Ki or are we talking about Crackdown? I'm, I'm we're talking about we're talking about Crackdown. I'm gonna talk about Killer Instinct in a minute. Talk oh, okay, crackdown. my bad. <laughs> Oh crackdown being multiplayer only seems like a great idea. Uh, well, they so we, like, we already knew that it was just the multiplayer is. this year. Yeah, it depends so. on what the cloud, <laughs> how it actually all works out. I always enjoyed the story to crackdown, so it'll be fun to see how it, the rest of it plays out. Yeah, we'll have to. I'm I'm extremely excited to see crackdown three. Just I understand for the multiplayer. Some people want to just play the single player, but I'm just excited to be jumping through a window, shooting at somebody in the next window, and just going through the wall. Yeah, I mean, like, going through the glass, fighting. I'm like, it's going to be ridiculous, you know? And to see how they implement the keys to the city, because they have to have that in the multiplayer, you know? I just want to see what different innovations they, they've thought about to implement with the destruction in the game, you know, and that's, I'm, I'm really excited for, I have not, I don't really have a problem, to be honest, with the, with only releasing the multiplayer, to be honest, because that's what we really, want. that's the biggest deal about it right now, you know, where we have to figure out, the is it going to be like, you get, you get like a killer instinct thing, you buy it, and then later on you get the story or something, I don't know. I have to figure that out later, I guess, they're going to announce it or something. Killer Instinct Season 3 to release exclusively on Windows 10 and Xbox One in March. During a recent Killer Instinct Twitch livestream, Microsoft Studios Creative Director Adam Icegreen revealed a batch of new information on Killer Instinct Season 3, which will launch in March, exclusively through Windows 10 and Xbox One. Okay, now we can talk about uh, Killer Instinct. Icegreen also confirmed that the character Tusk will be joining the game's roster, along with Kim Wu and Battletoads Rash, Lot of which was announced during Gamescom. And there are more details on Reddit. So. Yeah, who's I'm. Who's the next character to show up in KI? Tusk. No, 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 no. I'm talking about who's the next random person. Like, didn't they say there's going to be more. Uh... It's not just the Battletoads guy. They're going to add somebody else weird. It's going to oh, be yeah. like Chief or Marcus Phoenix. That'll be crazy. How are they gonna put? Come on, how are they gonna do that? Like seriously, that's gonna be. If they do that, that'll be ridiculous. Well, I mean, Chief was already in Dead or Alive, so. Yeah. Oh yes, Dead or Alive. But First of all, that wasn't Master Chief. Well, okay, it wasn't Chief, but it, it's a fucking spun. Yeah, it was, Master Chief it was the same. Be, they can't do it. it they, was can't, a woman. they can't put. They can't put. What are you gonna do? You gonna do a chainsaw as your your your. Uh, Ultimate combo and like with Marcus Phoenix, oh they can't God. put him That'd in. Be kind of fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would, I tell you what, that might actually get me to play the game. <laughs> wow! Can you imagine so, his fucking music too. It'd be so fucking dark <laughs> in that game. Already end, so dark. It, and at the end, it would just be like it's a mad world. <laughs> so that's yeah. terrible. And then he it would, would be like Don own, dying. Yeah, he has his own, own map too, right? You're right. So he, they, it would make his own map for that. Like they do every character, so it would be crazy. A broomac can come off from the side for his finish, his ultimate finisher. Yeah, <laughs> no, it would be dumb coming back from the dead. But I don't think they can do the chainsaw because it's not. You know, I mean, Killer Instinct is 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 a brutal game, but it's not. It doesn't know? have but, fatalities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it'd be it'd be fine. I'm still waiting <laughs> for Mortal Kombat versus Killer Instinct. The, oh my gosh. The best game of all time. You've been waiting for that for like decades, you know. Like no, but they joked about it, so now there's a possibility. Oh wow! They'll they'll never do it because they won't want to miss out on PlayStation Four sales. Oh, that shit would be fucking amazing. To put to put all that time and effort, and then to not be able to launch on PlayStation when Warner Warner have always been about PlayStation. All their games are marketed by Sony, or they just or they don't have platform marketing. But I could see them getting. Like, if, like, I don't know, Sub-Zero came to Killer Instinct. I could see that more oh, than... Oh, yeah. That could happen. A crossover game, yeah. Sub-Zero and Killer Instinct would be so weird. Like, you can't do certain moves, you know, because... Like, I don't know, you can't break somebody's body in, like, a million pieces. So you can't do that. Okay, Scorpion. 
Oh, Scorpion. Work with that. So when he goes to rip out the person's heart, but he's fighting, I don't know, Spinal. What exactly yeah. happens? You just rip it out and it just like... Bones. Well, there is no heart. He's, yeah. he's fucking just bones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just bones. Does Spinal so just, just look at him and turn his head and hit him in the face and continue on? Oh, yeah, they would have to... Um, You're right, the the uh, the reversal. You're right, it would have to be different yeah, when they do the reversal. Oh, yeah, that'll be cool. They could do that. You're right, you're right. They could do that too with, with um, Sub-Zero. They or if Spinal it. showed up in Mortal Kombat, that would be fucking insane too. Spinal and Mortal Kombat would be amazing. <laughs> it would freak out everybody. He would do some messed up stuff, man. He would burn you with his skulls. Okay. Uh, Xbox One Elite Controller shortage is expected through March 2016. Looking for an Xbox One Elite Controller and can't find one? You're not alone. As the premium pad is sold out basically everywhere, Dan Microsoft has warned the $150 controller will continue to face limited supply through March 2016. In a statement to Tech Insider, Microsoft said it's sending new stock to retailers every week, but because the controllers are flying off the shelves, the supply will continue to be short for a number of uh, for a few more months. That elite controller, that's all I'm saying. Um, when they next do their quarterly report, which I think for Microsoft to be in February, and they'll talk about the quarter ended 31st of December, in the Xbox section, someone's definitely going to say, by the way, we made a fuckload of money charging $150 for a controller that we couldn't keep in stock. Guarantee it. Phil Spencer's going to be in there and he's going to have like a, a bath. And he's going to get, like, dollar bills from people that paid for Elite Controllers in cash. And he's just going to jump around in them. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Xbox could, like, sell two more units. But if they keep selling Elite Controllers, they'll keep the brand alive. (laughs) With, with, With what I assume is the significant markup, they must have. Yeah, you'd think. Making a fucking fortune with it. <laughs> All right. Xbox One may get lightweight, cheaper model in 2016. Microsoft has already said it expects 2016 to be a big year for new Xbox games, but now it's been reported that next year may also see the launch of a new Xbox One model. Microsoft blogger Brad Sams reports today on Petrie. He's heard from internal sources that Microsoft is discussing a lightweight Xbox One. So the idea of this thing is that it is, it uses like a, it's going after Apple TV, but it's limited to Windows Store games, so it wouldn't have... It's not really an Xbox One, though. It's not an then, Xbox One, yeah. I I would be surprised if we didn't see a slim this year. It's been three years. That thing is That thing is only so big because they were concerned about another red ring of death. So I'd be surprised if they weren't able to shrink it in a new model, even if there was like a new, smaller chipset as well. That's got to be this year. I need it. This huge VCR thing is getting on my nerves. All right. <laughs> I I don't have a problem with it, but whatever makes you happy, Steve. Well, it's just a bit. It's just a bit big, and I look at my PS4 next to it, and it's nice and. It's all and, slanted and, and like compact, well and it like fits. Whatever. It fits perfectly in a, in a gap I've got between my TV and the wall. Like it was literally like Mark Cherney said, this needs to fit in the gap Steve's gonna have in the TV that he buys in 2014 and the wall, and it fits. You know why it fits there? Because there's no games to put beside it. But <laughs> moving. Same plan. <laughs> Every ex- every exclusive in Xbox One's holiday 2015 lineup sold over 1 million units, uh, the platform holder has announced. Those games are Halo for Guardians, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Forza Motorsport 6, and Gears of War Ultimate Edition. So Halo only sold a million units, Steve? Uh, it's a minimum, not a maximum. The number of Xbox One gamers who played Microsoft Studio published titles more than doubled compared to 2014. A particular note is the fact that Rise of the Tomb Raider managed to hit 1 million sales. Rumors and reports emerged following the release of the game at Crystal Dynamics' latest had flopped in the UK, selling less than 63,000 units in its first week on sale. Admittedly, 1 million isn't loads, 
but it's better than initially feared. Uh, Aaron Greenberg did also confirm that he said it was well over one million and said it was sell through to consumers rather than just sold into retailers. Uh, among other 2015 highlights singled out by Microsoft were some crazy achievement numbers. Apparently, Xbox gamers unlocked 4 billion achievements and racked up a total game score of over 77 billion in 2015. Good work, team. Cool. I mean, it's good to see that they actually had an amazing holiday season for their game sales and that we're going to see sequels to all these games because of them all selling over a million. Uh, there was a lot of hate uh, on certain games. Like, I know it was Tomb Raider in particular, but, like, Forza got a lot of shit from people, like, saying it didn't sell or anything, and it's nice to hear that it actually sold. What are you talking about, Dustin? We don't know. It's either ship. We need the real numbers. Real okay? numbers, yeah. <laughs> we need the real numbers. <laughs> well, I do think that, that numbers... <sighs> Let's face it, right? And this is not exclusive to Microsoft. Any company where they're selling gangbusters, they're going to talk about it. They're going to talk about it. They're going to shout from the rooftops, and Microsoft have done it plenty in the past. So when Microsoft start being quiet, and they are perfectly within their rights to be quiet, regardless of whether their title is successful or not. But this you know, is have... them shouting from the rooftops now. This is, their, exactly. this is how they but do this it. Is, but this is what they should be doing. Because... This is, they don't have to give you an exact number. They could just go, hey, every single one of ours sold over a million. We were doing fucking great. But I think I think that's good and that's important because it, it does say actually people are buying these games and they and it was a, a minimum, not a maximum. I mean, I'd be surprised if Halo Five wasn't uh, sort of over, over two million two, plus yeah. by now. Um, but I mean, look, it's still down on previous Halo titles, but that's you know they're going to make money on that, and you know it's, it's going to be fine. Halo Seven, Eight are going to come, like yeah. But I I do think that it, it is important because as I said. Microsoft have never been a company to be shy about their success. So then when they when they refuse to talk about sales, then, then I think it is reasonable to think, well, actually, maybe their stuff it just isn't selling that well. You know, combine that with the reports that go out. But, and Steve, with... now let's, not, let's not forget, though, during November and December, if you compare, compare it to their competition, it would be Nintendo or Sony, none of them talked about even Uncharted 4 or Xenoblade. So I'm just saying. Okay, well, so. Uncharted 4 didn't ship and Xenoblade yeah. didn't ship until December 1st. It, like I'm saying, like neither one of them even mentioned... Like They could mention the first week, oh, this was how much it sold, or or the bundle. Remember the bundle uh, for Uncharted? They could have came out and said, look, during that time, during Black Friday, remember? During Black Friday, Uncharted 4 sold a million copies. They could have said that, but that that wasn't the case, you know? So I well, yeah, but they but they have been updating us on the fact that PS4 is now sold through. Is it? Yeah, but that's thirty-five point nine million. That, I'm saying that that's expected, though. You know you that. Know, that's yeah. what we know now. That we would expect that that would happen. But anything else, they don't say anything. No, I'm just but saying, Microsoft they, doesn't have to report now. Even at their at the their end of the financial year, they don't have to report console sales. Yeah, uh, they can literally just report Xbox Live sales and be good with their investors. Uh, what it is interesting is they did report, and we don't have it in the news, but they reported that, what was it, uh, <laughs> ARC is, has been downloaded a million times and has a more active user base on Xbox than it does even on PC. Which is crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, but the, like downloading a million times to a game that anybody can download because you have an hour to download it, I mean, that's just, uh, it's... I, the question is, how much did it sell? And should should I go, well, there, it's just a bullshit number because anybody can download a game preview game. The million doesn't mean anything. Microsoft's trying to hide how bad Ark's actually doing on Xbox because they just don't have the server capacity. They were just lying the whole time. No, I mean, this is just how they're going to do numbers. They're going to come out and go, hey, we sold a million on all of our titles. We're doing really good. Yeah. Like, sure. they don't have to come out like and go, oh, uh, Tomb Raider sold 1.45 1 million, 1. million copies. <clears throat> and that's including console sales. And then you know, it's funny. If somebody it. said that, you're right. You're right before you say Somebody would say, well, that's lower than the... You know, what was the number they were throwing out? Like 3.4 million or something? But that was across, like, multiple... No, it was at the time. three or four different platforms. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm saying that's probably why they didn't do that. that now I understand. They, they just wait. They're like, no, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to say anything. They don't have to. 
And there's like people that read NPD, which are going off of, okay, if we take this line graph and then we look at this pie chart and if we figure that last year was 20, this year's 20% less than last year, we do this and that and we've, oh, the numbers have to be this. But then the NPD doesn't get it all right because they're not counting uh, fucking digital sales, which we know are up to 25% of sales. So, yeah, we can roughly estimate what the 25% is, hoping that the 25% is right, and we can get the game's actual sales. But that doesn't include bundles. It doesn't include anything. It's just a bullshit number. Like, the, <laughs> nobody knows how well these games are selling except for Microsoft, Sony, and the actual developer themselves, and that's it. This whole, like, console war bullshit about numbers, that's why we don't even really talk about it on the podcast when NPD comes up. I let Vern and Tim fucking have their little... Like, oh, blah, 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 and then I, I fucking end it. Because it's, at the end of the day, it's meaningless. But, it but you know what was impressive, though? Is that, that? They, they can literally say that every... Like, that's crazy, though. Like, when you compare it to anybody else, like last last um, holiday, you can say, look, all our games, man, sold over that, you know, to their competition. Like, a lot of pe- like you said, a lot of people were hating on it. Now, now I just notice a lot of people are just, you know, flip-flopping a bit. They're like, well, that doesn't... You know, is that enough? <laughs> You know, I've heard people say that. Any like, game that, that sells over a million copies is a great game. Uh, it makes a lot of money. They do a lot of, you know, it's they're going to keep building on that franchise. Exactly. Yeah. I think, uh, and this I find I thought was encouraging for, you know, stuff like Quantum Break coming up. People clearly are buying their games. And, I th- and as I said, it, it encourages me. And, you know, it's not that I was necessarily specifically discouraged, but now that they're talking about... And, and I actually think that they felt like they had to say something because of all the talk. I don't no, think that... Don't you I think feel, they felt Steve, obligated. Don't you feel like this is more of a Nintendo response than it is a Sony? Like, this is them... Like, Nintendo comes out and they'll go, Oh, it's old shit load. It did really well. Nintendo's happy. Nintendo never comes out and says, oh, fucking Mario sold 1.73 million. Like, they don't do that. They don't have fucking big pressers to talk about every single little game they have and the exact amount they sold and which were consoles and which were bundles and which was... No, they just go, yeah, we sold a lot. Mario's Microsoft has never been shy about it before, though. We've no, always but known in the last two what? years, they've completely changed. They've changed the way they are categorizing Xbox as a company. They switched CEOs. Like, this is a new company. It's not the same old Microsoft. Yeah, because they gave us for Halo, they gave us the... the um. They didn't want... People were, were saying, oh, they didn't sell that much. I mean, GameStop, right? GameStop came out, and they were like, we don't know if Microsoft's number is correct. And then they changed... Remember, they updated their response. No, look, we, we were wrong, you know. So, they, well, they, they, that's... They, they were wrong. No, because like, GameStop yeah. was like, their, their digital sales are only like at 15, 20% tops. Yeah, that was crazy. And then Microsoft's like, no, nah, shit's more like around 30... 40, yeah, much like much it's, higher. It's, it's, yeah, much it's, higher. It's fucking growing tremendously, digital only, and uh, your business is going out of business. So, yeah. uh, good so luck. I, so, so Jen, Dustin's correct. He's right about like how they're changing their the wording. Like everybody wants to see a number, but you have to remember every time you're not gonna get like a major number. They might just tell you how much it generated, right? They might just tell you that how much money it generated. Oh, it generated that's what they do with Halo. They always give a a. a a number in terms yeah. of money received, yeah. but I, I just think that it's you know it was good that they talked about it and and as I I do feel that they felt with some of the things that were being written like they had to say something, but you know they've got good news, you know you should you should share good news and as I said I'm much more encouraged at how their other games are going to do. No, but I think we'll get an Xbox uh, amount sold. The, the first time you're going to hear how many consoles they've sold, it's going to be E3. Oh. Well, they're not going to re- they're not going to update everyone on that. You'll you'll know what's happened if they stop saying we're ahead of the 360. No, no, I agree, but they haven't even done that. Like they haven't said anything. Yeah. Like they just yeah, they, well, yeah. Then they're not going to they're not going to say anything about specific numbers. They won't be able to I, unless they have a significant. Upturn, boost, which, yeah. which it would be so. I'm not saying that you know. They're no, not but if sell, they have a boost, it. it but then they'll just they say that boost, they'll just say be, we're fifty percent up or something. E3, like before you hear, hey, we've sold thirty million consoles, forty million consoles, or whatever. Yeah, when they get to that bigger number, you know, then they can uh, say that. Because you have to figure, <laughs> at what is Xbox? Xbox is probably at twenty-five million, twenty-four, somewhere in there. 
Yeah, the, uh, I was guessing. No, about I, was, I don't million, think it'd be. Million, I think that it has high. to be. Old. They were it just at be. twenty million before this holiday. No, what they said was was that we're above the three hundred and sixty, which was about seventeen point seven. By twenty percent, right? So that would be. They the didn't. Range. They didn't classify how far above it they were. They just said, you know, we're above the three hundred and sixty. Well, I think how, it's well, probably. You think that they're just slightly above, or I think they are. They're, well, I, well, I think like, it'd probably be between about eighteen and twenty. Okay, so they're, what? They're only at eighteen or twenty. You think they only sold like two million units this holiday? No, they have to sell more well, than that. Well, no, because they're saying be they're saying on um, January fourth. Like on January 4th, they're still above the 360. Okay. And the 360 at that comparable time was at 17.7. But if they were at, like, 25, I don't think they would have... I don't know. Yeah, let's say... I don't, I don't think they are that so, much higher. Significantly higher, like... 20, 30% higher. I think they're 18, 20, around that ballpark. But... Like I said, if they actually have anything to talk about, I don't think we'll hear about it till E3. But they're not going to do like fucking monthly updates to tell you what I, each game's going to be sold at what point or any of that shit. No, I'll tell you to fucking like NPD's not. Uh, I'm just uh, I don't know. NPD's not meant for people. It's meant for businesses. The console war's stupid. Um, well, then the the next time that they'll update something will be if Quantum Break does well. No, or... but it, it'll be like this is at this point their ML would be oh Quantum Break's doing great. Uh, we'll talk to you later, and then if it sells <laughs> over a million, hey Quantum Break sold over a million, and then you won't hear about it. Yeah, but that they they won't be. I don't think they'll say anything about console sales. They'll just say they're doing really well. Yeah. All right, <laughs> that's it for news then. Yeah. All right, so let's just get into what we've been playing. And let's just talk about Ark. <laughs> I played oh, a shitload of Ark. Played a lot of Ark. Yeah. Played a ton of Ark. Uh, Ark's amazing. You should all play it, like the million other people that have done. I think I did count as one of those million people when I turned it on for five minutes. Tried to um, like take the stuff of someone that had died, and it wouldn't let me. And then I turned it off. <laughs> that didn't get very far. I'm sorry. All right. Um, what else have I played? I played a little Minecraft, not too much. I actually went. We were going to start playing Diablo again, believe it or not. Diablo Three: Reaper of Souls. Uh, got into Make it a character. We played for about 20 minutes and then put it off, but because uh, somebody was feeling sick, of course. Um, but then we switched over to uh, playing Halo Guardian, Halo 5 Guardians, and that shit is still amazing, the multiplayer. I got kind of in the dude bro moment, and I just wanted to keep playing nonstop for hours on end. Nice. Yeah, but that's, that's all stuff. I've been playing. Eric, what have you been playing? Halo, Halo, Halo. Of course. Well, five. Um, I played a lot of custom games. I played with Vern. We played. Um, look, I told Dustin about this. We we had two good games, like really good games. Everything else, it's like we ran into the Halo Five Pro Team, and they just slaughtered us. And the on on we slaughtered us on Overgrowth and and Vern, and then they slaughtered us on. Eden, and they was controlling the house, and they had all the BRs and everything. I was like, this is crazy. How'd they get all those, you know? And they were just taking us down from, like, different angles, and they are like, it was just ridiculous. Um, but it was fun. <laughs> um, I played some Warzone. We didn't get to play any of the new... I didn't. I played the new map, but he, I didn't get to play the new map with him. New map, uh, what's it called? The Battle of Notches. Uh, but we played on the regular Ark um, Warzone map. Um... And it was fun. We lost there too, though. But we all—I got to play with him in McDonald's. We played on uh, McDonald's. It's a custom map. Uh, if you guys want to look on YouTube, look how Halo Five drive through. It is some guy made a perfect. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not even joking. A perfect. 
like if you look at it, you'll think this is McDonald's. Okay, you did, immediately he did the urinals, he did the the booths where you sit down in, he did the cash register, like the board, you know, where you look up at. And he has like a parking lot and a, and a gas station and an auto place. It's ridiculous. And we played a lot on that. It was fun, very fun um, map to play on. Uh, I didn't get to show him any other custom map of that. I don't think. I wanted to, but we didn't really get to play that. But I've been playing Halo a lot. All right, uh, Steve. What have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Gears. I played it with a, a lot of it with Old No Bones. Actually, we had a good time playing Warzone and a bit of Blitz. I got up to level ninety on the multiplayer. Uh, I think I'm approaching two K kills towards seriously. Uh, I've got quite a while to go in terms of XP and to get to level one hundred for the achievement, but I'm doing all right. Uh, I've also been playing um, Fallout Four. I'm finding it difficult to get into, which isn't necessarily unheard of me with RPGs but it's I don't know it's just not it's not grabbing me right now um, you know perhaps if I do a few more story missions and play a bit more I'll you know eventually it'll sort of hook me in but it's a bit a bit tough going at the moment so and I just decided right now just to not bother with Life is Strange which was the other thing I was trying to play but I got as far as the menu and was like, no, nah, I'm going to do that another time. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, putting off uh, <coughs> Minecraft story mode for whatever reason. I just haven't had time. Uh, but I want to finish that myself. Alright. Um, I guess uh, anything else ever, anybody want to go over? Do we want to talk about Oculus Rift and our thoughts? Um, yes, we can talk about that. Oh, we didn't mention Recall coming to Windows 10. Oh, Recall is coming to Windows 10. Anybody care? Anyone? I think it's a good thing. Good thing? Okay. More money. Better chance of success. Alright. I agree. Eric, <laughs> we disagree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Alright, cool. Let's talk about Oculus Rift. Let's talk about six hundred dollars. Six hundred? Don't you mean five hundred ninety-nine U.S. dollars? That's the <laughs> <exact>. <laughs> yeah, but in the United States, you got to pay tax, so it's more like six fifteen, six thirty, somewhere around there. Oh yeah. Jeez. So, six hundred dollars. <sighs> and that is before a lot of money. you got the rig. Let's not forget that. It was before taxes and shipping as well. I know over here shipping was like thirty pounds. No, they said it's sixty five. <laughs> they said it's gonna be sixty five dollars. Jesus. I know shipping. someone I know someone who's bought one as well. That's look, in Canada they got it the worst, I think. It was it nine hundred and fourteen dollars or something. Something ridiculous. That's that's crazy. It's almost a thousand. No, but that's because the the the, uh, the what what is their money called? Not the lo I guess the loony is down. Man, it's been down for a while. The because... Canadian dollar is down. No, no, but it's 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 not doing good against the American dollar. The American dollar is actually they, up quite a bit. They pay like two hundred and fifty dollars more. That's crazy. Yeah, like before but anything. the American dollar is doing really good right now. It's actually hurting Europe and Canada. Oh, dang. How well the, the American dollar's doing. But it's a it's a it's very expensive. But everyone knew it's gonna be expensive. I mean HTC have sort of been saying that Vive is gonna be a premium product and is expected to launch at a higher price than that. Yeah, the only thing about that you've got the Vive though? is that they said that they're going to use those controllers, and they're going to put the controllers in the box with that? Come on, now. You know it's going to be more money with that in the box. No doubt about it. Yeah. I'm thinking about a 1000 It's going to be ridiculous. I reckon it'll be like 8 or 9 I think I think they'll want to avoid being seen as a 1000 Although, on the other hand, they may well have been surprised at how much Oculus came in. And so when they said the premium product, I think they said that before Oculus came in. So maybe 
you know, where people were expecting Oculus to be sort of four or five, and they were thinking, you know, we'll be six or seven. And then Oculus are like, oh, by the way, we're $600. And they were like, oh. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll put a Steam controller in there instead of the the um, Vive controller. So, like, okay, let's throw that out. Let's, let's put a Steam controller in there. <laughs> so, it'd be interesting to see what price Sony going at. My, my, my guesstimation, right, is that they're going to go in at $500. It's, it's going to be like a scenario. Like, like wait, wait, wait. 500 What do you do for 500 I don't know what they're going to do. In okay? this package. Just 500 in package. this package, I think they're going, like, if we go by PSX, like the games they got, I think you're either going to get London Heist and that zombie game. And they have I'm not talking about games. No, I, no, I'm saying what's going to be in the, what's going to be. Do I get a move in, controller? You, I don't know. I don't think that will I, I think you won't get I think you'll get the dual shot and you'll get the camera. Well, it, well with the PS4, you, they don't need to give you a dual shock because you've already got one. I think what they'll do is they'll have two packages. They'll have one that includes the camera and the uh, the wand and one that doesn't. And the reason why they'll have one that doesn't is because if you've already got a wand and a camera, you are not going to want to buy another one because it'd be useless. And they will use that to get a, a cheaper one as, as cheap as possible. But what I what I don't understand is the PlayStation Move for the, the like for the PlayStation Move for the um, PS4. I was very confused by that whole thing that I saw at PSX, right? And every time I see, they demo it because there was like a leak. I think people forgot a while back where they showed like the the what the controller was going to look like, right? It looked like they took a, took the DualShock Four and they broke it in half. So and we never ever saw that ever again. Um, That's so been I don't know. something that they've banded so about. Are we going to see that, or we're going to see PlayStation Three move? That's that's what they're using now. They're using it's just the, it's just the PS Three move. They're not going to yeah. come up with another controller. So, so you're telling me that they're going to keep the PlayStation Move from the PS Three and use that with? That's kind of. I mean, I've seen them use that, but I didn't think they were going to continue using that. You know, because that's from the PS Three. You know, shouldn't you have like new tech? You know, to work with the new, you know, I mean, the new VR headset. You know, if you're going to, you know, I, every time I see them using those things, I'm like, that's the P, you know, I'm like, that's PlayStation 3, you know? Well, yeah, but, you know, the tech, was it 2010? I yeah. think it, it would have kind of, I think if it was like, if they were trying to use like Wii modes, then I, I might agree, but because the the tech is kind of newer and they're still using it as is, I think it'd be fine. I mean, DualShock's got the um, like the six axis motion stuff in it anyway, so it's just all about that. I don't think it, I don't think it's too much of a problem. You yeah, know, I, the just, only reason why I say that, Steve, is because like, like you expect it's like the camera, right? They had a a PlayStation camera, right, on the um, PS3. You don't, you didn't keep that camera, you know, and you know what I mean, and put it on the PS4. So yeah. I would think, like, with the with the controller, you would have like a if they, we we don't know everything. They could change it before it comes, but I, you would think they would, you know, make a they would make a sequel, you know, and you know, bring out the other controller. But what I think is going to be Dustin about in the package, I think you're going to see. I know Steve said that they already have the control they might not use. I think they're still going to put a controller in there, and they're going to have the camera. They they might do something similar to what the Oculus Rift is doing. They're not going to have two of those PlayStation moves in the package. I just don't believe it. Maybe they'll have a separate way where you can go in a store and say, oh, you can buy it separately, or there might be another bundle, but I don't believe they're going to have them both together. I don't believe it because you got to pay for the camera, you know, and then you got to pay for one of them. And then, because I remember the price of it, you know, like that's another $50 on, t- you know, another $50 in the box to buy that. You know, you don't want to, I don't think they're going to do that. And I think to make that $500 price point, you know. It's going to be interesting to see how the market goes this year. It won't it won't be, I mean it won't be big, but I don't think anybody's anticipating it being big. You know, it's gonna be a slow start and it'll take years to come to fruition and you know, 
companies just need to stick with it. But that's why Oculus got bought by Facebook, was so they had the capital behind them. And you know, Sony, you know, PS4 is doing well. I mean, that does represent the easiest and probably cheapest solution once you factor in hardware. So, yeah, that's true. Well, they said they expect five point one billion dollars in VR this year. That's it's a lot. Go yeah, but on. when you're charging six hundred dollars for each headset, that doesn't look likely. Yeah, maybe they mean. Uh, they said they did say something. I saw. I said they said twenty-seven million is going to uh, uh, VR devices will be from Google Cardboard. So maybe that's where most of the money is going to come from. I guess. Mm-hmm. I think also the software, you know, because and this happens uh, a lot when you when you're buying any new platform, like you want to get the most out of it. So I think that the attach rate for software for those VR games to those VR devices is going to be very good. Like, it won't just be, you know, like, the sort of, was it the attach rate per console is usually between sort of like six and eight. But I think that you will have people buying lots of games very quickly. So I think that the software market as well could be pretty good whilst it's in its infancy. You know, like, you know, like consoles, the sort of the drought for new software. As soon as something comes, people just snap up the next sort of best looking thing. I got a hundred games, right? So, uh, well, in development, you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be it for the podcast. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking over <laughs> hosting, Steve. I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, Eric, thank you for coming on this week. I know you're a busy yeah, man. Pleasure's mine, okay? Pleasure's mine. And this is probably the most you've ever talked on a podcast before. <laughs> I think Eric does better when there's fewer people around. It's like the, the few times when it's been like a nice sort of intimate thing with like me, him, and you. Like Eric's all, you know, he's well in there, you know, can't get enough his microphone always, you know, talking away. That, that's good. Okay. All right. <laughs> you can also write us and comment on this episode in. Hook us up, <coughs> excuse me, with your letters at letters at xboxuncut.com. Tell us how we're doing, what you want to hear about, what news articles you, you're interested in, uh, what games you're looking forward to, and I think we're going to have to do an E3 show soon, like a, a, a six months out prediction show. Oh, that should be interesting. Games, 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 yeah. as Tim would tweet in block capital letters with a picture of Phil Spencer. Oh, yes, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Need to put E3 on it. Yeah. All right. But we will catch you next week on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. We will catch you all later. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight, especially everybody in live stream on Twitch. And you, too, could watch us live on Twitch. By visiting us on twitch.tv slash Xbox Uncut. We also put our content up on YouTube on youtube.com slash Xbox Uncut. But please come and hang out. Send us a letter. Read, read, uh, leave some reviews on iTunes, places like that. Tell a friend. Maybe post it on your favorite you know website like Reddit. And help us gain <coughs> more listeners. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, and we will catch you later. Peace out. Later. Good evening. Uh, one sec, guys. I'm sorry. This is the worst way ever to end the show. One second. For whatever reason, that was turned all the way down.